Hello everyone, we are back with another Reddit circuit review and this time we are looking at a audio amplifier PCP using TDA2030 port and it's uploaded on Reddit by user I think Telesco456 so what we're going to do is quickly go through the circuit and show you how I would go about designing this PCB the main focus of this series is to highlight some common and some basic issues when doing schematic capture and PCB design. So obviously I don't get very detailed on the schematic itself but I will do some brief checks to make sure that the schematic is going to work. So in this case we do have a reference design from the datasheet of the component itself which is a through-hole part. Now you can see the user over here has used the through-hole part for the amplifier and mixed that with a bunch of SMT components as well. Now this might be because they have the SMT components in stock, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'll see if they've got any comments that suggest that. Not really. My first suggestion, I guess, would be that all the components should be replaced with the matching technologies. So I think we should use through-hole components for this full board. And I think we should try to stick to one layer if we can. If we don't need to use the second layer, we won't use it. So first of all, I will do the schematic capture. There aren't many things wrong with the schematic and the way it's been drawn, but there are some suggestions that I can make on this, so that's what I'll be doing. And then there are a few things that we can highlight on the PCB design itself. So let's get started. Now, if you want to build this board yourself, I highly recommend PCBWay. They are a one-stop solution for many different things. So they can build your PCBs, they can do the assembly, they can do 3D printing and various other things. One of the things I really like about them is the community where you can share your boards with other people and other people can share their boards with you which obviously is very interesting now in terms of pcb quotes they're very easy to get as well you just upload your pcb files and you can get a quote directly get high quality boards at very low cost please check out pcb way who are a sponsor for this video so i don't think this user has uploaded the files themselves i should have asked him but what i'm going to do is start a new project so open KiCad file new project so now that we have our project, I'm going to go into schematic editor and what I'm going to do is just draw this out but in a slightly better way and I'll make sure I'm not cause and I'll make sure I'm not following any errors that the users made over here. So I'll try and look at the um, data sheet as well. So first of all, you can see we've got some connector over here with four pins coming in. Two of the pins are used as ground. We've got power supply coming in here, which I assume is going to be 12 or 14 volts. Could be higher, I think the TDA2030 can run up to 30 volts, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll have a look at the data sheet in a bit. So pin number two on this is the audio input, and they have a potential divider, which is going to reduce the volume for the signal going to the amplifier itself. Then there is a high pass decoupling capacitor on this side, which basically gets rid of any DC from this signal, so that you only have the AC portion of the waveform over here. Now, the first thing I would say is removing this ground symbol over here. If you were to look at this circuit, you see the ground is crossing the path of the wire. So maybe move the component out. But I think I would suggest just moving these two components slightly out of the way because they're going to be decoupling for the component itself. Then there are basically three components here with the same value, R2, R6, R1. And all three of them have been set as 56K. I don't think that's going to be an issue, but I think I would recommend 100k just because that's what the data sheet says. Going lower on this value, um, the deck, so going lower on this value, which is basically RA, RB, and R3, I think, on the data sheet. So just looking at the schematic, we've got RA, RB, and R3 over here. Data sheet says, well, if you go lower than what's recommended, you get a chance of oscillation. So I would just say we stick with 100k in that case. Uh, we have a capacitor over here, C7, and that will basically help to reduce the value of this resistor for higher frequencies. Now, our feedback network is with R4 and R3. So I'm just going to assume these values are okay. They're slightly different from what's recommended on the data sheet. So over here, you've got 150K and you've got 4.7K. And you also have a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor over here. So what this capacitor does is that for any DC, the value of this equivalent resistor is going to be very high. So obviously your feedback is RF over R1 plus 1 because this is obviously a positive. 
which might be slightly different for this um, amplifier, but that's generally the case. There might be a formula in, in here somewhere for the gain calculation. If you've got a very large uh, resistor on the denominator, so which would be the case for DC, you're going to have very low gain for DC basically. And at very high frequencies, basically this capacitor is not going to exist. So what you will have is 30K over 3.3K. So I cannot see the equation for gain on this. So I'm going to assume it's the standard uh, non-inverting amplifier gain, unless I'm just not reading in detail enough. The last thing we have a resistor over here, a resistor and a capacitor over here. And we also have this AC coupling capacitor over here. And this is basically just to remove DC components going through the speaker, which would be connected on this terminal. So the main things I can see on the schematic itself that are wrong, or I would advise against is basically just these ground symbols. Other than that, the schematic is fairly tidy, to be honest. Maybe we can change um, this symbol here because I'm not a big fan of this symbol. It's hard to click on it and move it. Probably use a symbol like this, but if you, obviously if you're not using a screw terminal, then there are other boxed um, header symbols that you can use. So overall, I think it's a pretty good job on the schematic drawing. And I'm just basically gonna redraw that. Another thing I should mention at this point is on the schematic, you can see that the user has just used the standard non-electrolytic capacitors. Basically, there's no positive negative sign on these capacitors. Most of these capacitors will need to be electrolytic as they have a better performance when the voltage is increased. So they maintain their capacitance a lot better as the voltage goes up. So what I'm going to do is basically use electrolytic capacitors for this one, uh, C4, C2, C7, C1. The only um, ceramic capacitors I'm going to use is C3 and C5. And I think um, there might be some better performance capacitors uh, for those as well for audio applications. But I think I'm just going to stick with the standard ceramic capacitors for now. So you can see on my schematic, I'm using the electrolytic capacitor over here with the positive sign on this side over here, which is going to be higher voltage than this side. Now it's a good idea to label your terminal. So this terminal here is a speaker. Let's say we're going to use a atom speaker, then we can also write that in. So you can see I've moved these two capacitors um, slightly out of the way so they don't so they don't interfere with the design itself. Then I've added a little note, uh, which is handy when you're kind of coming to do the PCB design. It's more handy for um, if the designs are going to be a little bit more complex, but I think it's a good practice anyway. So I think I've got all the components um, covered. I don't think I've made any mistakes. So I've checked it a few times now. And basically what I'm going to show you now is some of the things we can do on the schematic capture itself to help improve the design. So the first thing we're going to do is basically add a net class directive, which is this one over here. And I'm just going to call that 2A because I believe there's going to be about two amps of current flowing down this path or just some high current flowing down that path. And there's going to be also a high current flowing down this path. So you can see I've called that 2A. And with that, what you can do is you can go into your schematic setup. You have your net classes over here. I'm going to add my pattern here. So I'm going to call that 2A, 2A. And basically, I want to change that wire thickness to 2. And you can change the colors as well if you want to. So you have to assign the net class to this as well. So you can see my nets on here. I've gone from green to yellow. Now you might not want this. Um, I don't really like it. I use it mainly for the PCB design itself. 
but it can help you differentiate the track. So obviously if you want to keep it back to its normal color, you can just clear the color. You can make the wire thickness a bit larger if you want. So, you know, you can go to 0.3. So I, I prefer this. I think it looks a little bit neater. Then obviously I want to add this flag to over this path as well and all the ground paths. But I'll just keep that in mind. Um, make sure to keep the ground tracks rooted as thick as possible. So all of these paths is basically high current, um, except for obviously here, but that's, we got to put up with that because that's just going to go that way anyway. So these tracks, we want to make sure we are routing them with thick tracks that meet the current for, I think it's two amps or three amps when I did my calculations, but some, some high current, basically I'll make sure that it's meeting at least three amps. Now, another thing that has been missed from this schematic is two shock key diodes or two um, general purpose diodes that have been included in a in the data sheet itself which you can see over here so you've got IN4001 which connects the ground to the output of the class AB amplifier that we have and the other one goes from the output to BSS now what this basically does is that if you have this voltage going above VS plus 0 0.7 0 0.6 then this diode will start conducting and basically this voltage will be clamped to Vs plus 0 0.7. And in the other direction, if this goes below 0 0.7 volts, then this diode will start conducting. So if this is 0, this is minus 0 .0 0 0.7, then this diode starts conducting. So your output voltage cannot go above Vs plus 0 0.7 or below minus 0 0.7. So I'm going to add those diodes in as well. Um, I'm not sure maybe this um, amplifier can produce higher voltages somehow so or maybe due to inductances or things like that so I'm going to add those in as well now, I should have added them in earlier because you can see now um, I don't really have that much space for it so you can see I've added the two diodes in the same locations so from the output to VCC and from the output to ground so this will be clamped to minus 0 0.7 and plus VCC plus 0 0.7. Now we can move on to the PCB design. But before we do that, we need to assign some footprints on here. Now, um, what I've done for the below materials is I found these components um, on Farnell. So I'm just going to use them. You can see that the 56K resistor I've replaced with 100K. And the rest are basically through hole electrolytic capacitors, except for one, which is slightly different, which is this one over here. You can see I've assigned the footprints for all the components that I selected. Um, again, these are the components from Farnell. Obviously, you can find equivalents to these if you need to. And I will upload this project on GitHub so that you can download it along with this bill of materials as well. So let's go into the PCB design now. So thank you for watching today. We will continue with the PCB design in the next video. I don't want to make this video too long. If you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It'll really help me out. Bye for now.